I'm watching the Washington Wizards play the Toronto Raptors. Game four last night, Sunday night. And towards the end of the game, Bradley Beal picks up his sixth foul, fouling out. Not allowed to play for the rest of the night. Crucial game four, must win game. And he starts to lose it. He starts to freak out. He can't comprehend what is happening in front of him. How could it be that the referee in this pivotal moment of this game could make such a silly mistake warranting me ineligible for the rest of this game? And to make matters even worse, we start hearing the crowd chanting a typical line that is commonplace when a referee is believed to have made mistakes. Ref, you suck. Over and over and over again. They wouldn't stop saying it. But let me ask you a question. If I rely on this human being, this referee, to help give me calls for not only the rest of this game, but for future games, why on God's green earth Am I chanting at a man that I need support and help from? Ref, you suck. How is this helping me? How do I stand to benefit in any way, shape, or form? And why can't Bradley Beal keep it together? Why is he jumping around like a two-year-old and he can't keep himself composed? People not knowing all of the answers is not a novel concept. It's been happening for a very, very long time. Two examples. For how many years did people believe that the world was flat? For how many years could people not even consider or fathom another alternative? Not because it wasn't possible theoretically, because obviously it is, because we know what we know today, but because people could not come to terms with the fact that there might be things that, that they don't know. If I don't get it, it's not a reality. The Jews leaving Egypt, how many of them stood up against Moshe and Aaron and said, we're gonna go into a sea? Are you crazy? Are you out of your minds? This is the idea. This is what the Almighty God, this is the prescription for freedom. You took us out of misery to go into death, to run into a sea of water. This is it. This is all you can think of. But why is it that we need to have all of the answers when clearly history has proven to us time and time again that sometimes just because we didn't know something doesn't mean that we didn't stand to benefit later on. So why do we keep holding on to what we know and why won't we allow ourselves to break free out of this mentality? Kobe Bryant, in his last game of his career, put on a historic performance, 60 points. And they interviewed him after the game and they were talking about all different ideas, but one idea came up that was so unbelievably striking and so relevant to this conversation. And the reporters were asking, Kobe, how did it feel to be loved and supported by not just Laker Nation, but from the entire world. Everybody, regardless of what fan you were at the time, was rooting for Kobe Bryant to go out in style. And you know what Kobe's answer was? It was nice for one night. But if everybody treated me like this, when I was growing up in my prime, there's no way I would have been as motivated as I was to prove people wrong and to play as hard as I did. So imagine 
If I'm a fan of the Celtics, if I'm a fan of the Clippers, and Kobe Bryant is killing me every single year, I'm doing some logic in my head. One plus one equals two. And what am I saying to myself? I know how to get into Kobe's head. I'm going to say some mean, nasty things about him. When he comes to my court, to my hometown, I'm going to boo him. I'm going to make him wish he never came into my territory ever. One plus one equals two, right? Except not for Kobe Bryant, because Kobe Bryant thrived on those moments. Kobe Bryant was waiting for people to test him and for people to criticize him because he used that as his motivation. So what do we do, boys? What do we do now that we know what we know? And I think the answer is very, very simple. And the question is, are you hungry? Because if you are, be prepared to take a nice bite of some humble pie. Because if you're willing to eat a piece of this particular pie, you will maximize your opportunities to get what you want in life. Because the question is, what do I want and am I getting it? For the Washington Wizards fans, the question was, am I getting what I want? Am I getting the right calls? The answer at the time was no. Bradley Beal was fouled out for a questionable call. Granted, it was very questionable. I don't know if I would have made the same call. And so the answer to how do I get what I want is to chant, Ref, you suck? That's the answer? No. That's me not willing to eat my piece of humble pie. That's me only processing information the way I can understand it. And that's me saying, I don't care about reality. If I can't understand that the globe is a sphere and that it's rounded, don't bother me with any new information. The earth is flat. And it's a dumb idea if we go into the Absuf. Because I don't see how it could work out. Eat the piece of humble pie. And lastly, understand that you're a human being. And human beings get upset and we get worked up. And so it's necessary for us to stay sane that we vent and we yell and we do things that maybe we really regretted. But after it happens, have the courage to go over to that individual and say, you know what, I messed up. I went over the line because I couldn't deal with something. I'm sorry, that one's on me. And if the Washington Wizards fans can learn how to do that, if Bradley Beal could learn how to do that, if they're acting like a two-year-old in front of the referee for making a call, maybe, just maybe, I can get what I want, which is at the end of the day to get the call. So boys, who's hungry? Who's willing to eat a piece of some humble pie? And who wants to just get what they want? If you're not willing, be prepared to live in a flat world. Be prepared to only live up to what you can think of in your head. And be prepared to minimize your opportunities to at the end of the day get what you want. Are you hungry? Get ready to get what you want because it's yours for the taking if you want it. Bon appetit. Shabbat shalom.